Hey there, welcome to That Dang Dad. My name is Phil, and tonight I want to talk about a new track from Canadian hip hop artist Dax. The song is called To Be a Man, and it catalogs some of Dax's frustrations and concerns with how men are treated in society. If you're a fan of music critic Anthony Fantano, then you've probably already seen him cover this track on his channel, The Needle Drop. I don't disagree with his take, so why am I making my own video about it? Well, one of the frequent complaints that I've heard from men on the internet is that the left and society broadly do not treat men's issues with respect or compassion. Some men feel that when women talk about feeling oppressed or disrespected, we drop everything to affirm that. And when non-binary people talk about being erased or dehumanized, we rally around them. But when men talk about their lived experience, their loneliness, their hardships, we tell them to shut up. They feel like we always call men oppressors, that we tell them that non-men have it worse, and we just generally make them feel like their pain doesn't matter. So while I agree with Mellon's analysis, I feel like the men who constantly feel talked down to online would find it a little too dismissive or mocking. As the left's man whisperer, I thought I would jump in with an analysis of the song and promise to treat the ideas that it expresses with respect and dignity. And as always, I feel like it's important to recognize that this song, while it purports to talk about the universal male experience, is pretty firmly focused on cis men. My trans brothers out there probably have a much different understanding of the challenges facing men, and I'm not sure this song really speaks to that, so while my analysis might not be useful to the trans guys out there, I think trans guys can actually add a lot to this discussion. Anyway, enough preamble. Take my hand. Let's journey together. Dax begins by talking about his goal for the song, to explain to those on the outside what it's like to be a man in the world. Specifically, Dax's experience of masculinity is one of isolation, alienation, and thankless labor. I know this life can really beat you down, you want to scream but you won't make a sound, got so much weight that you've been holding but won't show any emotion. As a man, it goes unspoken that we can't cry when life gets hard. Unconditional loves for women, children, and dogs. We know that we just have to play our parts and don't nobody give a damn about our broken hearts. Yeah. Maybe some of you out there can relate to this lyric, and if so, I gotta tell you, speaking as a 40 year old man, this verse expresses a mindset that is as common as it is unhelpful. I would never tell you that you're not allowed to feel beat down and uncared for, but this goes beyond a feeling you have and becomes a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy where you navigate relationships with a mindset that causes you to alienate yourself from the people in your life. You are allowed to make a sound. You are allowed to show emotion. You're allowed to cry. Dax is correct that for many men, it's an unspoken rule that you have to take on the weight of the world with a stoic, brave face, but that rule is a lie. When we talk about how patriarchy hurts men too, this is one of the examples. Patriarchy is what created the unspoken rule that men are not allowed to show vulnerability or pain. There's a lot of reasons for this, but my theory is that patriarchy doesn't like men expressing vulnerability because its entire reason for existing is to protect the hierarchy that paints men as natural leaders. I think under patriarchy, leadership is very closely tied to glory and prestige. To be the boss, the chief, the king is to be in a position of authority and honor. And so it's dangerous for a king to admit weakness because everybody wants to usurp him and claim that glory for themselves. If you look weak, someone strong will rise up and take what you have. The problem with this mindset is that it subtly frames your relationship to the people in your life as competitive instead of cooperative. If you're afraid your vulnerability will invite attack from someone stronger than you, you're probably someone constantly on the lookout for attackers in your inner circle. You're probably on guard against being taken advantage of. And that instinct is totally great when you're, say, answering an email from a stranger proposing a can't lose investment, or when you move to LA to start an acting career, but that paranoia is poison for friendships and romantic relationships as well as for fatherhood. Being in a real, fulfilling relationship is not possible without exposing yourself to getting hurt. You cannot experience the highs of being genuinely loved for who you truly are without risking the lows of rejection. And the line in the song that really set my teeth on edge was, unconditional loves for women, children, and dogs. Setting aside the very obvious issue with viewing those three groups as equals, I'm not sure whether Dax believes this statement is true or whether he's saying it in a frustrated way because he thinks society operates in that way, but in either case, it just isn't true. 
Men are worthy of unconditional love too, but there is a cost associated with accessing that love. You have to stick your neck out there and risk pain, risk being misunderstood, risk being challenged, risk being rejected, risk finding out that things you do are harmful. And you have to risk giving love out selflessly and maybe not getting it back. And this isn't easy at the best of times, but if you're someone who is unwilling to show your vulnerability because you think people out there are trying to trick you or exploit you, this is going to be very difficult for you. Anyway, moving on, we next hear the following. As a man, we gotta pave our way. Our only function is to work and slave. There's no respect for you if you ain't paid. You're disregarded as a human and you can't complain. And if you ever make it up and actually reach that place and find a woman that you love and give her your last name, you'll feel the things that you provide is only why she stays. I actually agree with the first half of this one. Uh, under capitalism, human beings exist to have their labor exploited. German hip-hop artist Karl Marx has a whole concept album about this. It's great. But in the second half, again, we see this paranoia about loved ones in men's lives trying to screw them over. Again, this mindset frames men as locked in competition, always trying to figure out who's trying to get one over on them. And again, carrying this with you into relationships is going to hamper your ability to connect with others and feel safe with them. I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over, so let's keep going to the next part. No wonder men are so depressed. All the things that they can't express, they go to war, get thrown on the shelf, then go back to war with their mental health, then grab that bottle and ask for help, try to pull themselves up out of hell, then fall back down and realize they're going to have to do it themselves. To me, this is the core of the song, and it really captures the inherent contradictions with how this track approaches masculinity. Because on the one hand, it is honest and sincere about real issues affecting men. The isolation they feel makes them depressed, many of them get sent off to war or other dangerous jobs that damage their bodies and only make them more depressed. Many struggle with substance abuse and feeling like they're stuck in these destructive cycles that no one is helping them out of. That's all very true and very valid. The American war machine loves to grind up young men to protect American political and business interests. Uh-uh, but I repeat myself. And conversely, ableist American capitalism hates to provide mental health care and resources to those who need them. It is your patriotic duty to make sure Halliburton lands $39 billion in contracts in Iraq, and it is a personal moral failing if killing Iraqi civilians broke your brain a little while you did it. But the song kind of glosses over that to lament that men grab the bottle and ask for help, try to pull themselves out of hell, then fall back down and realize they have to do it themselves. Dax correctly identifies that men are suffering under the weight of a society that devalues them, but his answer seems to be to double down on the isolation and assume that only you can fix your own mental health through sheer force of will. Again and again, the song complains that men are abjected and alienated, but then assumes that men can't actually hope for any kind of help or understanding, that they alone have to address their own needs. The deviousness of patriarchy under American capitalism is that it pits men against each other in this war of all against all. For you to get that job, another guy can't have it. For you to get a good deal on a house, the other guy has to lose out. If you get the girl, the other guy doesn't. The less there is for them, the more there is for you. This is why men are miserable. We were born into the middle of a gigantic melee where like 50 guys hoarded all the good stuff and forced the rest of us to fight over scraps. We're told we have to be harder, better, faster, stronger if we want to succeed, but there's always someone more harder, better, faster, stronger than us. We're taught that life consists of the dominant and the dominated, and that if you don't have the brains or the muscles to dominate, then it's your lot in life to be dominated, and that true virtue is sitting there and taking it quietly, taking it like a man. And it's all bullshit, man. These are systems that were built and lies that were told to protect those systems, and we can get rid of both of them if we want to. If you're a man in circumstances making you miserable, it is extremely likely that your misery is making someone else very, very wealthy. Whether you wrecked your body at work or at war, or whether you can't get the brain drugs you need because they aren't covered, someone is paying for a third vacation home thanks to your sacrifice. And that's why I object to the rugged individualism that I detect in to be a man. Because the solution to male misery isn't pulling your own self out of hell, it isn't being suspicious that the women in your life are trying to con you, and it isn't trying to wind back the clock to some golden era that never actually existed. 
The solution is, say it with me everybody, solidarity. Dax is right to point out the isolation men feel, but he's wrong to treat that isolation as an inevitable fact of life. The solution to male alienation is to work with other alienated people to topple the systems hurting everybody. Men it sucks that they send you off to war to destroy your bodies. And right now, there's a migrant farm worker destroying her back picking strawberries for pennies a day. Link up with her. Men, it sucks that mental health care is stigmatized and your access is limited. And right now, fascists in Texas, Florida, Kentucky, Tennessee, and elsewhere are stigmatizing health care for pregnant people and trans people. Link up with them. Men, it sucks that you are only valued for what you can provide. And right now, there are millions of disabled people who have been completely dehumanized and kept in a state of enforced poverty because their labor can't be exploited. Link up with them. I've said it before in other videos and I'm saying it again now. Male pain matters. Your feelings matter. Your fears and your anxieties and your traumas all matter. Truly. Full stop. Pointing out other groups suffering from oppression and exploitation is not saying they have it worse so shut up, it's saying people who suffer gotta stick together and you could learn a lot from them. Men, we have to drop the competitive, paranoid, zero-sum game mentality we were taught. Yes, there are bad actors out there. Yes, some women have used and abused men. But we're going to have to risk our hearts and our egos if we want to find true connection and start working against the systems harming us. Men always want to talk about bravery like it's all about charging onto Normandy Beach as bullets whiz past your head. But true courage is being vulnerable and honest with the people in your life, putting your heart out there, opening up about your emotions, and asking for and being willing to receive help when you're in crisis, especially when you've done it once and gotten screwed, and especially when it makes you feel small and helpless. Unfortunately for Dax, he seems to feel that what it means to be a man is to live a life where everyone around you is using you until the day you die. I disagree. For me, what it means to be a man is to find yourself born inside a machine built long, long ago by guys that were a lot like you. And that machine is breaking down. It's grinding up people in the gears, and even the parts made specifically for you aren't working right anymore. What it means to be a man is to be caught between the bosses who want you to keep the machine running just a little longer, and the people suffering in the gears who want you to help tear it apart. What it means to be a man is to have a wrench in your hand and a decision to make about what you're going to do with the tools you've inherited. If you're somebody concerned with men's issues, I hope you found my analysis respectful of the challenges to be a man expressed. If you didn't agree with my take, I hope you at least felt that I approached the topic with dignity and compassion. Because I really do care about men's feelings. It breaks my heart to see so many lonely men struggling in silence out there, sometimes even taking their own lives because the pain outweighed their capacity to cope. I just don't think to be a man is approaching that phenomenon in a way that's going to help. But what do you think? Am I off base? Did I miss something? Is my frequent call for solidarity obscuring more relevant solutions to men's problems? Let me know down in the comments. And fellas, let's keep it civil down there. Anyway, please give the video a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and please share this video with somebody that you think might find it interesting. My channel only grows from shares and streams and word of mouth, so if you like what I do, tell a friend. I really appreciate you spending time with me tonight. Hope to see you on the next one. Have a good night.